Hello everybody, it's AJ back again. This is the Mighty Glue Stick, and we're going to continue on with our Lycanthrope series with the last that you find in the 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons Monster Manual, uh, and that is the Were Tiger. Now the Were Tiger um, has again been around since the very start of Dungeons and Dragons back in 1974 um, and it's interesting that they, they, they're they more updated and a much better version of Were Tigers as far as I'm concerned because traditionally the Were Tigers were a neutral lycanthrope that was most often female um, which <clears throat> for many reasons is just stupid um, and I'm sorry if that offends any traditionally minded um, D&D players but Were Tigers are just as often male as they are female and they are not listed as having fur when they're in humanoid form either, which is good. However, um, there are certain things about wet tigers which are quite unique as far as lycanthropes go. Uh, they are refined and fastidious. Um, their aggression is constant in a, a sort of a xenophobic nature. Um, and this is the, the tiger's solitary hunter nature coming through. They don't like competition, therefore they don't like making other wet tigers. And they don't like other lycanthropes. Um, they they will avoid the company of other lycanthropes if they can. And they avoid civilization if they can. They only really come into civilization to trade, um, where they will present um, a fine collection of pelts and uh, teeth and horns and things like that from things that they've hunted, um, or gems or other such thing, or information on uh, lost locations that may be of interest to adventurers. And here comes a um, a really good tie-in adventure idea for a hook about how you can use a wear tiger in your game, but I'll get to that in a minute. So first of all, let's have a look at the stats of the wear tiger. Wear tiger. Uh, so they have. They're a medium humanoid. They're neutral alignment. Not neutral evil or anything, just neutral. So they just don't care. They don't care about civilizations, mores or laws. They only care about their own motivation, their hunger, their needs. What they want is, is their sole concern. They don't, they don't have empathy for other creatures. They will occasionally have small family groups, um, where it's their mate and their offspring, but, um, that's it. That's, they, they don't, they don't combine up with anybody else. They, they won't rescue you from certain death. Um, they'll just go on their merry way. They, they really don't care. Uh, they have an armor class of 12, um, and that's in all forms. So humanoid or uh, hybrid form or tiger form. They've always got an armor class of 12. Uh, they've got 120 hit points, and they've got a speed of 30 feet in humanoid form or 40 foot in tiger form. However, they are able to pounce in uh, tiger or hybrid form, where um, if they've moved at least 15 feet, similar to the werebore, straight toward a creature, they can then leap and hit it with a claw attack on the same turn, uh, and the target must succeed on a DC 14 strength saving throw or be knocked prone, regardless of its size. If the target is prone, the were tiger can make an additional bite attack against it as a bonus action. So that's quite a devastating first salvo, um, and it would make sense that the tiger would hit, run away, pounce, run away, pounce, run away, until it's overwhelmed you with um, its extra attack actions and done serious damage. The uh, bite attack of the were tiger um, is uh, plus five to hit. It does eight points of piercing damage, and if the target is humanoid, it must dis uh, succeed on a DC 13 constitution saving throw or be cursed with wear tiger lycanthropy. Now, um, as I said, tigers, wear tigers don't like passing on their curse and their, their, um, pounce attack is designed to kill. So they will, if they're biting you, their intention is to kill you. Uh, so they won't, won't stop basically until you're dead and they will single out a target and remove one member of the party at a time so they'll concentrate their attacks on one target at a time uh, to reduce numbers and to be certain that they've killed off that threat uh, so the claw attack is plus five to hit also and seven points of slashing damage and they are very fond of using scimitars and longbows um, they have a similar fighting style to elves they will take to the treetops they will stalk their prey they'll make sure that they're in an optimum advantageous position for getting a stealthy uh, run up and then a, a surprise uh, pounce attack um, and they will open up with a salvo of long ranged longbow shots um, if they're being harried or if they're if they've got stealth and they're just firing uh, longbows quite at long distance they're usually in heavy cover or from heavy cover and uh, the scimitar is a quick and brutal machete like sword 
um, designed for chopping slashing damage. So that's uh, plus five to hit and does six points of slashing damage with scimitar. And uh, it's plus four to hit with longbows. Range is 150 to 600 feet at long range, uh, doing six points of piercing damage. Of course, uh, where tigers are intelligent, they've got... Um, Strength of 17, Dexterity of 15, Constitution 16, Intelligence of 10, Wisdom of 13, Charisma of 11. They have a plus 5 to their perception and plus 4 to stealth. They are they have keen hearing and smell. Um, and they have an advantage um, on perception checks that rely on wisdom for um, hearing or smell checks. So tracking. Scenting the wind, being able to tell where you are if you're uh, if you're upwind of them, they'll be, they'll be able to smell you. Um, and they have dark vision out to sixty feet, uh, giving them a passive perception score of fifteen. They are hard to sneak up on. Um, and not only that, but they are always wary um, and very in tune with their environment. So if they are suspecting that there are humanoids around them, they will trap, leave. Um, all sorts of snares and things like that that create noise or um, create obvious disturbances of foliage and terrain that they can pick up on so that they will know where you are or know if you're coming. Uh, they speak common, uh, but they can't speak as tigers, obviously. They've got a challenge rating of four. Typically, since they don't generally gang up on anyone, that's a fairly true reflection of their, their, uh, their challenge rating for a party of adventurers. However, they are probably quite adept at bushcraft. Uh, you could litter the, the, uh, the environment that the were tigers are attacking you in uh, with snare traps, um, rolling log traps. Just think of the, the battle scene with the uh, Ewoks on Endor against this, the, uh, the Empire Stormtroopers, and it gives you some sort of idea. Or watch um, Commando with uh, Schwarzenegger attacking the alien or in Predator or any sort of uh, Rambo movie. Which gives you some idea of what sort of things they could they could cook up, you know, supple branches that have spikes attached to them, um, or animal horns or teeth, um, that sort of thing. So that's them on paper, basically. Um, now, were tigers, uh, they have no problem with hunting humanoid prey if it's available and if they can get away with it. Um, there's plenty of animals out in the wilderness, but remember, this is the Dungeons and Dragons world uh, where quite a lot of the animals are just as capable of killing a were tiger as anything else and there are monsters around particularly out on the fringes of society as we got were tigers like to inhabit so uh they're a large supernatural predator um that will take whatever prey it needs but when you think about it humanoids particularly um, if you can take on the form of a humanoid and understand them and lure them out into the wilderness they would have no problem in doing that and one of the ways they can do that is to go uh clothe themselves in the guise of a, a traveller who comes into the settlement and uh, sits in a, a bar or a tavern or some such, orders whatever f uh, meat is available, pays with pelts or, or some such little trinkets that it's found, and perhaps it's got an unusual item, a gold coin or an elven relic, um, a jeweled dagger or some such thing, and it's reluctant to, to show it to people. Uh, but with sufficient persuasion, it will relate the story of, oh yes, there's a lair of um, some, you know, elven wizard or some such, long abandoned, but uh, I saw glittering jewels and things like that in there. But there's giant spiders, which I'm deathly afraid of, so I won't go anywhere near it. And some foolish farm boy is thinking, hmm, I'm going to borrow my dad's old war sword, and I'm going to go out there, I'm going to kill that spider, because I've got no problem with spiders, I kill them all the time. And I'm going to take whatever jewels are in there, and I'm going to come back and be mayor of the city so he goes out into the wilderness he's outpaced by a giant tiger which is traveling along 50 meters through the the forest beyond him well aware of the farm boy hacking and slashing his way through the jungle and by the time he gets there lurking and waiting in ambush is a very well prepared hungry and quite amused were tiger which makes short work of that farm boy and has long pig for dinner so that's when possibly the adventurers get involved where the town folk are calling upon them to go and investigate whatever happened to this guy. There's a, a supposed ruin out there that he went out to look at, and we suspect he's probably been bitten by a spider. And so the adventurers make their way out into the wilderness, and lo and behold, they get into a conflict with a were-tiger, which um, has recently eaten human, is not really that interested in eating any more of them, and it's quite upset that they're interfering um, and quite a good setup that it's got out there, probably fairly close to its lair, and battle ensues. So, 
Wear tigers. Definitely pretty cool. As people who want to do, they probably want to uh, role play as a wear tiger or ha- apply some sort of template. Um, I would advise that wear tigers are problematic in an adventuring party because they have no empathic bond and no desire to be a part of a group. They are uh, consummate lone wolves, really. Um, and they're highly aggressive. Uh, they're very territorial. They're very selfish. Um, they, if you think about basically the worst aspects of a cat, that's them. Combine that with a psychopathic killer who will eat you. Um, and it makes it very problematic to, to truly play a supernatural predator like a were tiger. So it's, if you really want to, you could play some sort of watered down version, maybe a were tiger who's been shown the error of his ways. But let's not forget, even tigers in captivity, even tigers that have been raised as pets are dangerous. They are man eaters. Um, of all of the the big cats, tigers are most likely to stalk and kill human beings, particularly in India. If you ever want to have a look up the stats, just check out how many people and how effective they are at killing humans. So yeah, just bear that in mind. All right. Well, that's basically the uh, were creatures that are listed in the monster manual. I'll probably in future go over some of the other many many different types of were creatures that uh, have been created in dungeons and dragons over the years you name it they've made lycanthrope versions of it um in the comment section uh in previous videos somebody was uh, mentioning um different types of uh were creatures and somebody mentioned a were ooze which i thought was just hilarious i would love to see somebody write up an adaption of a where ooze and if you can find it anywhere on the internet please leave a link in the comment section below i would most appreciate it thanks for watching everybody and i will check you again on the weekend uh where i'm going to be continuing on with uh i don't know have you got any ideas for another video or shall i just carry on with the list i was thinking maybe covering lizard folk